Now, your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, good evening to you. Take a look at the roofing design at Gibson Area Hospital camera. Man, look at that cloud cover that we've got across the area today. It's put another cool one, but hey, no complaints here. We're still definitely sitting pretty, but definitely seeing the cloud cover here showing up widespread across the state. So that's obviously impacted our temperatures a bit. And that's only 60 degrees from a triangle from Champaign down to Effingham over to Springfield. It's going to be another cool night tonight as temperatures continue to fall off. We're expecting another one as we head back down into the 40s. But tomorrow is by far the warmest day on the entire seven-day forecast. We'll show you just how warm we're going to get when we come back and talk about some more rain chances. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. Moso sparks a subpoena showdown. Who takes the stand as lawmakers investigate corruption in Springfield? Springfield Police or Springfield City Council is focusing on police reform tonight. What changes the city council is looking to make? The death of two inmates led to protesters taking to the streets last month. How the coroner now says one of those inmates died. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. Speaker Michael Madigan abused his office. Speaker Michael Madigan abused the public's trust. The first witnesses took the stand before the House Special Investigative Committee today. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. House Republicans accused Speaker Madigan of bribery and corruption and are calling for the House to discipline or possibly expel him. Our Capitol Bureau Chief, Mark Maxwell, is live at those hearings in Springfield now. So, Mark, what can you tell us so far? The high stakes committee started out with some heated back and forth between Democrats and Republicans. They just now took their first break about three hours into what feels very much like a deposition. Republicans grilling the compliance officer from ComEd and Exelon. Uh, he's already acknowledged that ComEd did pay $1.3 million in what amounted as bribes intended to sway or influence Speaker Madigan. He's also admitted that ComEd's former CEO gave up a board seat. Uh, a coveted board seat on the company's board there to one of Madigan's close friends and allies without putting that board seat up for applications to the public. Just to give some reference, the House previously voted to expel a former member for taking $7,000 in bribes. This $1.3 million, House Republican leader Jim Durkin giving an opening statement before this all started, comparing this scheme to a new approach to one of the oldest tricks in Illinois politics. The individuals at ComEd paid in order to influence or reward Michael Madigan include one of Madigan's top three precinct captains, a former ward committeeman, an alderman, and many others in what was described as part of an old-fashioned patronage system. For decades in Illinois, clouded politicians would often find government jobs for their political allies. That's illegal, but now those friends of Madigan would land on ComEd's payroll instead as ComEd got to raise what it charges its electric customers. Now, there's still a long way to go before this committee gets to the core of what really happened. There are several key witnesses they still hope to call. House Republicans are eager to call Madigan's close confidant and intermediary, uh, Mike McLean, who was a lobbyist for ComEd, to do that, they may need to issue a subpoena. That appears to be where this committee hearing today is headed, still yet to be decided. We would need at least three Republicans and one of the three Democrats on this panel to vote yes to approve that. And they're still going well into the evening hours here in Springfield. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell, WCI3, your local news leader. All right, Mark, we know you'll stay on that and bring us any updates as they happen. Mark, thanks. Springfield City Council is discussing police reform tonight. That includes stricter training regimens and a ban on chokeholds. WCI 3's Cole Hankey is live in our Capitol Newsroom tonight. So, Cole, how long have council members been working on this? A couple of aldermen worked on these reforms all summer after all of the protests that took place after the death of George Floyd. The plan will ban chokeholds, the use of tear gas to break up crowds, and will limit the ability to request no-knock uh, no warrants. All of these reforms also include caveats for police to actually use them in extreme circumstances. The Springfield Police Department already follows some of these rules anyway, but the aldermen want to make them city law, so the rules can't change down the road under a new police chief or under a new city council. There are also several pieces that focus on the Police Citizen Review Commission, including creating a database 
for police misconduct cases. The ordinance is up for debate tonight. It will not be voted on. And coming up later tonight, we will have full coverage of that debate. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Cole Hankey, WCI3, your local news leader. All right, Cole, we'll look forward to that update later tonight. Thanks. City leaders and police in Champaign are holding another community listening session tonight. Police say they are doing this to better understand the community's concerns surrounding police interactions, safety, and how the department can improve. Tonight's virtual meeting runs from 6 to 8. This is the second of five sessions they're hosting. We have a full list of the other dates and times and how to join that conversation at WCIA.com. Here's an update from Iroquois County now. The coroner has released the cause of death for an inmate there. Andre Maiden died in the county jail September 26th. Now the coroner says toxicology results show he overdosed. The drug, a combination of heroin and fentanyl. Maiden was one of two inmates who died days apart. The Champaign County coroner denied our FOIA request or open records request for autopsy results of Jason Fancher. He died September 25th. State police and the Department of Corrections are investigating. A member of Governor Pritzker's staff tested positive for COVID-19. This is the second time the office has had a positive case. The first was in May. The staff member tested positive yesterday after showing symptoms. Officials say that person attended several events with the governor last week. The governor tested negative himself, but he and all close contacts will self-isolate for 14 days, and all staff who work in the office are being tested. Let's take a look now at today's coronavirus numbers statewide. The Department of Health is reporting 1,300 new cases. That brings the total number of infections up to 291,000. The seven-day positivity rate is down slightly at 3.6%. 23 more people have died. There have been more than 8,600 COVID-related deaths in Illinois. The city of Georgetown is considering home rule. That's if enough voters say yes. If they do, Georgetown can act autonomously. That means it can create and set its own ordinances. Alderman Mike Scott said right now the city has trouble resolving ordinance issues. He also said making the town home rule means it would be eligible for grants. Home rule entities also get to keep a greater portion of the state's fuel tax. Scott said the city would like to use that money for road repairs. The Fisher School District's new budget is in the red again. It's facing a deficit of more than $480,000. But it'll have just under $5.3 million left in reserves at the end of this financial year. Superintendent Barb Thompson says the deficit is from a combination of lower funding and higher expenses. She says they considered not fill, filling some paraprofessional positions, but they needed all hands on deck for in-person learning. You're never too old for a rubber duck race, especially if your duck could win you thousands of dollars. You can watch it all go down without leaving your home. Plus this. Oh, they're stuck taking cold sandwiches every day. It's harvest season, which means farmers are hard at work in the fields. How a restaurant is making sure they get a bite to eat while they're at work.